Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing cholesterol biosynthesis. Okay, right, so we've now discussed how you get acetyl coenzyme A from the matrix of the mitochondria within the cell into the cytoplasm of the cell. And once you've got acetyl coenzyme A within the cytoplasm of the cell, you can then use it uh, to produce cholesterol. Okay, so let's now start with how we are going to synthesize uh, cholesterol from acetyl coenzyme A. So the first stage in the reaction is uh, converting acetyl coenzyme A into mevalonate. Okay, so we want to aggregate together free acetyl coenzyme A molecules to produce a mevalonate molecule. Okay, right. So, we'll start off with the first reaction, which just involves joining together two acetyl coenzyme A molecules. So, I will draw two acetyl coenzyme A molecules. Okay, right. So, what are we going to do with these two acetyl coenzyme A molecules? Well, basically, uh, we are going to... Um, break this bond here between this carbon atom and this sulfur atom. Okay. So imagine breaking that bond and sending one electron back to that carbon and one back to the sulfur atom. Then we're going to break the bond between this carbon atom here and this hydrogen atom here. And again, imagine splitting it by homolytic fission. And once again, I will um, stress that these bonds do not break by homolytic fission. I'm not giving you the electronic mechanisms for this. I don't know the electronic mechanisms for this. It would take all day if we were going to discuss the electronic mechanisms. I'm just showing you the logic by which you can see that what's on one side of the equ equation adds up to what's on the other side. Okay, right, so we have these two acetyl coenzyme A molecules. And what we're now going to do is bind this carbon, which has the free electron from the breaking of this bond, to this carbon over here, which has the electron from the breaking of this bond. Okay, and what we'll end up with is this. Okay, so here's the methyl group. Then we have a carbonyl group here. Then we have the methylene group in the middle. And then we have uh, the uh, carboxyl group bound to uh, the coenzyme A molecule via a thioester link here. Okay, now the other thing we're going to produce in this reaction is we're going to bind this hydrogen atom to the sulfur atom to create back again an intact molecule of coenzyme A, which I will just write as CoA, and then the only important group that we care about is this file group here. Right, now this reaction is reversible, so it goes both ways, and it is catalyzed by an enzyme within the cytoplasm called acetyl coenzyme A acetyl transferase. Okay, so this is catalyzed by the enzyme called acetyl coenzyme A acetyl transferase. Okay, right, and the product, okay, this product here is known as aceto acetyl CoA. Okay, so because we've got an acetic acid group here, that's called an aceto group. So that's the aceto, and then we've got that bound to the acetyl CoA here. So this is aceto and then acetyl CoA. So this is aceto acetyl coenzyme A. Right. Okay, now what's going to happen is this aceto acetyl coenzyme A is going to then be bound to another molecule of acetyl coenzyme A. So remember I told you that we were going to bind together three molecules of acetyl coenzyme A overall to create this mevolonate molecule. Okay, so we've bound uh, two so far together, so we need to add in a further one. Okay, right, so let's get another molecule of acetyl coenzyme A here. And what we're going to do is add this onto our molecule of acetoacetyl-CoA. Okay, right, so here is our third molecule of acetyl-coenzyme A. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to break this bond here. Okay, so we're going to break one of those bonds between that carbon atom and that oxygen atom. So we're going to break only one, not both of those bonds. Okay, and you can imagine giving one electron back to the oxygen and one back to the carbon atom. Okay, we're also 
going to uh, break this bond here between uh, this carbon atom and this hydrogen atom here. And again, imagine giving one electron back to the hydrogen and one back to the carbon. We're then going to bind this carbon to this carbon here, okay, which has a free electron from the breaking of this single bond here. And we'll bind this hydrogen here to this oxygen here. Okay, so what will that overall create now? Okay, and we also, um, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in a molecule, the water, okay? And the water is going to be to hydrolyze this thioester link here. So we're not still going to have this uh, carboxylic acid group here involved in uh, a thioester link. We're going to break that bond when we add it on here. Okay, so let's show this uh, product then. Okay, so here is a carboxylic acid group bound to a coenzyme A molecule. Here is a methylene group. Okay, then we've got a carbon here. Then we've got uh, a methyl group coming off this carbon. So this is the methyl group here. So let me highlight the different bits that refer to each portion. So this portion that I'm now highlighting in blue here, which is this uh, acetyl coenzyme A portion, this is this portion here. Whoops. Okay, so that's all of that. Then we have a methyl group coming off this middle carbon here, and that's that methyl group down there. Okay, and we're also going to have an alcohol group coming off that carbon, which comes from binding this oxygen to this hydrogen here. Okay, so we'll have that alcohol group there, and now this carbon will be bound to the rest of this molecule here. So we'll have a methylene group, which is this methylene group here, Okay, and then we'll have the carboxylic acid group, which comes from here. Now, remember, we've cleaved this thioester link here, so we don't still have uh, that coenzyme A molecule linked to that carbon of the carboxyl group. Okay, now, really, this would have an alcohol group on it here from the direct hydrolysis of this bond, but, of course, it will lose its proton in the uh, physiological pH of the solution. So therefore, we'll have the conjugate base of the carboxylic acid uh, group instead. Okay, right. So this again is a reversible reaction. Okay, and this is catalyzed by the enzyme HMG-CoA synthase. Okay, and the name of that enzyme will make a lot more sense after I've told you what the name of the product is. Okay, so the name of this product is HMG-CoA, or at least that's the shorthand name for this uh, product. The full name for this product is to call it beta-hydroxy, okay, and then beta-methyl, so beta-hydroxy, beta-methyl, so that's the H here, the H is for the beta-hydroxy, the M is then for methyl, so beta-methyl, and then it should all be one word, but I've run out of space, so you should have then joined directly to that um, methyl glutaryl CoA. Okay, so basically, uh, glutaryl, uh, glutaric acid means the um, five carbon carboxylic acid, which has carboxylic acid groups at either end. So if we took off this methyl group and this alcohol group and just had two hydrogens there, basically we would just have glutaryl-CoA because we've got a glutaric acid molecule uh, linked to a coenzyme A molecule. Okay, but we've got these alcohol groups and these methyl groups, which is what's all, what all of this is about here. Okay, so the old naming system for uh, the carbons within a carboxylic acid is to call the first carbon off the carboxylic acid carbon the alpha carbon. That's why in amino acids you call that middle carbon within amino acids, the one that's next to the carboxylic acid group, the alpha carbon. And then the one after that will be the beta carbon, and then it will be the gamma carbon. So that's why we call this beta hydroxy, beta methyl, glutaryl, coenzyme A, because we've got a hydroxyl group coming off the beta carbon. We've got a methyl group coming off the beta carbon. So this is beta hydroxy, beta methyl, and then it's coming off glutaryl coenzyme A. Okay, so for short, uh, that molecule is called HMG-CoA. Okay, right, so that's why uh, the enzyme which produces HMG-CoA uh, from acetoacetyl-CoA and this acetyl-coenzyme A over here is called HMG-CoA synthase because it is synthesizing HMG-CoA.